Thank you, Matthew. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access. Thanks a lot for the, for the press conference. I wanted to ask, I, I noticed you were talking about the international financial institutions, so I wanted to ask about them. And maybe this may be directed to, to, to an Administrator Clark. There's been discussion in the UN system that the, the World Bank, for example, treats countries that are most impacted by these refugee flows, like Lebanon and Jordan and some in West Africa, as middle-income countries and makes them non, not eligible for, for uh, concessionary financing. And I wanted to know what's being done in the UN system to actually turn it around, given that it's a system. And the other one has to do with after the, the Nepal earthquake, uh, the IMF said that, that Nepal was somehow not eligible for, for its uh, program called the Catastrophe Containment and Relief Trust, which they set up to be a you know, no, no interest rate. It sounds like a great program, but if, if Nepal, even in that tragedy, wasn't, wasn't uh, you know, eligible for it, what, what does it say? Can the UN system itself tighten up these programs so that the countries can actually get money when they need it? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, I think <clears throat> those, those are very good questions because it's clear that vulnerability does not disappear with middle income status. And UNDP has been doing a lot of work specifically around <clears throat> the needs of the small island developing states uh, who are MICs, who lose concessional access to uh, loan finance and various other uh, preferences, uh, but still have the same vulnerabilities of a major weather, or in some cases a seismic event, which can cause their economies and societies enormous damage. So there's quite a lot of work being done on what would be the different sorts of mechanisms that could kick in, and whether in uh, judging uh, the extent to which a country is eligible for concessional finance should this waiting for vulnerability be in the uh, criteria. So I think there can be a systemic approach to that and we have been getting very good support from uh, the OECD on this think tank work, the Commonwealth Secretariat, CARICOM and the Pacific Island uh, uh, Forum. Now, uh, on the, uh, the broader issue around the middle-income countries uh, who are bearing the, the bulk of the refugee burden from the uh, Syria crisis, uh, I, I am hopeful, if there hasn't already been movement on this, that, that there may be, because these countries, are, again, are in an extraordinary situation. Uh, we see every day on our television screens the, you know, the, 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 the debate in Europe uh, around a, a fraction of the numbers uh, coming in uh, that uh, the countries in the neighbourhood have absorbed. Turkey, two million. Uh, Lebanon, over a million. Jordan, not far short of a million. Kurdish region of, of uh, uh, Iraq, uh, many, many hundreds of thousands. There is huge stress. These are extraordinary times. So I think uh, loan mechanisms need to be more flexible to, to deal with such extraordinary uh, circumstances and externalities, if we want to put it in, in economic terms. And, and I, I don't have specific uh, insight into the IMF uh, position on Nepal, but, but again, you know, major catastrophic uh, event. Uh, does it call for some kind of debt holiday, debt freeze, more flexible mechanisms? Uh, I think we would argue that it does. Uh, but, but these are issues that member states should take up in the, you know, the governing bodies of, of the IFIs to try to get that, that greater flexibility. No one's asking for a free ride with debt, but they're asking for an understanding when externalities completely beyond their control kick in. Thank you. James? Mr. Wood? Oh, sorry, Mr. Wood. Well, I, I, I didn't mean to not ask you. Just, please, please. Um, the issue of... Uh, or the concerns of mid-income countries have been there for a long time. And people say that we have been uh, concentrating on LDCs, LLDCs, SIDS, and African countries. They are really ignored. But if you look at the discussions that led to the sustainable development agenda, the issue of inequalities and the concerns of the mid-income country are taken good care of, which means right from the start of implementation of uh, um, SDGs, the concerns of mid-income country will be very high on agenda internationally for, for leaders to consider. And secondly, about the, um, the Bretton Woods institutions, and what I would like to say is that because I cannot speak on, the, on behalf of them, but we have been working very well with them since we started discussion and the formulating SDGs. 
And recently, both IMF and uh, World Bank have some new initiatives, for instance, from billings to trillions. I think together with the United Nations, we work out to find more and to mobilize more re financial resources. Then that will be available for member states most in need, in need and those who have been neglected. The good opportunities are there. We have to work for it. Thank you.